What's up guys, John here and welcome back to John Moon Studios. In this week's video we're going to dive into some music theory, we're going to talk about some secondary dominant chords and modal interchange chords. We're going to show you how to spice up your chord progression so stay tuned and let's get right to it. All right, so let's dive into these concepts. So I'm assuming that if you're watching this video, you wanna spice up your chord progressions and you already have an intermediate knowledge of music theory. So when I talk about things like one, four, five, I assume that you know that it's the one chord, the four chord and the five chord of whatever key we're working on. If you don't understand these topics, please leave your comments down below. Um, I will leave my uh, music theory playlist in the description and if there's a video there that can't help you, drop your comments down below and let me know what you want to see next and I will be happy to make another video on other concepts. So we're going to talk about the 1-4-5 chord progression we're going to hit the secondary dominant topic. So the secondary dominant topic is it's really interesting and you actually hear it a lot in you know popular music and you don't even notice it but it really shifts your ear to a new kind of sound, a new tonality, and that's exactly what it does. It, sh it temporarily shifts your ear to a new tonality. And I'm going to show you this example using the 1-4-5 progression in the key of C. So in the key of C, we have C major as your 1 chord, then we have F major as your 4 chord, then we have G major as your 5 chord, or G7 because I'm going to add the 7th, and then we're going to go to C major again. All right, so that's your one, four, five. So now what we're doing is we, you have to understand that in tonal music, the strongest relationship you have is the five to one. So in the key of C, five to one is G7 to C, right? Because G is the fifth of C. Now when we do a secondary dominant chord, what we're doing is we're temporarily shifting this tonality, right? We're shifting this tonal center to a, a, a chord inside of the key of C major. So Let's say we use the chord F, G, A, B flat, and then C, right? So this is the key of F major. Now what we're going to do is we're going to grab the dominant chord of F major and plug it into the C major chord progression we were just working on. And what this is going to do is when you play that C7 chord right before the F major, you're going to hear this strong pull into the F major, and that's what we want. So check this out. We're going to play C. We're going to go to C7 and then F major. And that's a lot stronger than just going from C to F major. Right? So let's try it again. So this is the C7 with G in bass that voice leads perfectly down to F major, right? So C, so there we have our secondary dominant. We could do the same exact thing for G major. So if we shift our focus to the key of G major, we know we have G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, and then G. Now in the key of G major, we have D is the fifth. Now we need to do a D7 chord, right? We need a D dominant chord, so that will sound like this. Right, and the notes I'm playing are D, F sharp, A, and C. And then we resolve to G. Right, so now if we put it all together, it sounds like this. And then here we can actually do our G7 because it resolves to G. And G is our fifth in the key of C. We can do G7 to C major. All right, so we're going to take a look at another example. And the chords I'm going to be using is the one chord to the five chord to the six chord to the four chord to the five chord and back to the one chord. So we're going to do them all in root position, that way you can hear 
how the secondary dominant chord really takes effect. Usually when you're writing these chord progressions, you want to use inversions just so you can um, use some voice leading. But in this case, we're only going to use root position chords um, so you can hear the effect of the secondary dominant more clearly. So we have a C major chord going to the G major chord. And now let's say from G major to A minor, we want to do something interesting, right? We want to change so it doesn't sound so boring going from one, five, six. What we could do is we can add this secondary dominant trick, right? Um, we can add this chord in between the G and the A minor. So what we need to do is we need to figure out, well, the key of A minor is no sharps or flats. So we have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then A again. And the fifth of that chord is E. And we know that in minor in minor keys, we could also use a dominant seventh chord. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do an E7 chord using the fifth of A. So E, E7 is gonna be the chord. The notes I'm playing is E, G sharp, B, and D natural. Now let's see what happens when we plug in that chord right before going to A to see what kind of pull we have. So here's C. Right, so that sounds cool. And now you could do that and keep chaining these, you know, secondary dominant chords to kind of create an even more interesting chord progression. So let's check what happens if we go from A minor now. We're going to go down to F, but before going to F, we're going to use that C7 chord we used from the previous example. Um, I am going to put just this one for, um, you know, using the G in the bass just because of voice leading, even though I said I would do it in root position, but we'll check both examples out so you can hear the importance of voice leading as well. So let's do the root position one first, and then I'll do the voice leading, and then you could judge for yourself which one you like better. So here goes. Right, so that was the root position C7 to F major. Now let's see what happens if we voice lead it, right? We're gonna get, instead of getting this bass motion, I'm sorry. We're gonna get this bass motion. The lesson of voice leading pretty much is the less movement you can make between um, notes or bass notes, um, the better, right? Between the notes of the chords, because if you could just move by step, um, then it'll create a better, you know, voice leading situation, and the notes will move more smoothly between the chord progression. So let's check it out how we could do um, this voice leading using the C7 with the G on the bass. So here it goes. Right, so that was the example using the G, um, C7 over G. Now we're gonna go ahead and take a look at what we could do after that. So if we go back to G major, um, we could just do a G7 and then pretty much end it off on C. So let's see what it sounds like. So I hope that was a clear enough explanation on how you can use secondary dominant chords. There are many more examples that I could show you, but again, all we're doing is finding the dominant chord of whatever chord you're using and then inserting it right before you play it. So that's pretty much the gist of secondary dominant chords. The next topic we're going to talk about is mode mixture or borrowed chords or modal interchange. These words are interchanged all over all the time in, in music language. But at the end of the day, all they mean is you're going to borrow a chord from a different, uh, a parallel key, whether it's major or minor. 
So what this means is a parallel key is going to be, you know, C major, C minor. Those are parallel keys, right? Not relative keys, parallel. They have to have the same root. So the gist of this is, let's say we're in the key of C major. And we know that in the key of C major, we have no sharps or flats. And we know that if we play a 1-4-5 chord progression, our natural occurring chords in the major key in C major is going to be C, F major, and G major. Or G dominant, rather. So in this case, since we're going to use modal mixture, right, we're going to do C, F minor, G dominant, and then back to C. And let's see what happens with that. And this F minor chord comes from the C minor scale. So if we do the C minor scale, which has three flats, so C, D, E flat, F, G, A flat, B flat, C. In a minor key, the four chord is minor because we have this A flat in the key, right, instead of major. So we have this minor chord here. Now what this is going to do is that you're just temporarily exchanging or borrowing the chord from the minor mode and inserting it in this major progression. So let's see what this sounds like. All right, so you heard how you know different it sounds than using the major version of it. So this is why mode mixture is a very, very handy tool, especially when you want to create a chord progression that can kind of catch people off guard. So let's hear it again. Right, so it, it calls for a very nice, a very nice um, satisfying, you know, kind of sound because this C major chord, the G goes up to A flat. And then it comes back down for the G chord. All right, so it's like a nice little half step interval that creates a very nice sound to it. So let's say we use mode mixture in a different way, right? We can use uh, um, both the major and the minor version of the four chord in the same, you know, chord progression. So let's see what this could sound like. So if we do, let's say, a C major to G major, A minor to F major. F minor to C major, right? So just follow along at the bottom of the screen. This is the chord progression I'm going to be playing. Right, so there you heard that this F minor chord really brought out some interesting color to end off this chord progression. This is, again, the power of using some kind of, you know, modal interchange chords. You can use other modal interchange chords, like let's say the flat 6 chord or the flat 7 chord. And what these are is that in the key of C major, the flat 6 chord, which is A flat, right, this 6 chord is going to be major, and the 7 chord is also going to be major. Alright, so again, um, well the notes in this chord is A flat C E flat, B flat D F, and again if you know this information, you know, I'm just covering it for those who probably don't know the notes too fast, um, but I'm assuming you guys know how to build these chords already as well. So um, we're going to see a chord progression that involves using, you know, this flat 6 chord, a flat 7, and then we end off on C major again. So I'm going to use the same chord progression, but instead of going down to F after the A minor, I'm going to go straight to the 2 chord, then flat 6, flat 7, and then the 1 chord. So let's check it out. And we're still in C major. We're using mode mixture here. Right, so that was the chord progression, right? We saw that we jumped from A minor to D minor, and then from D minor we went straight to the A flat, to the A flat chord, to the B flat, and then we hear C. 
So it's a pretty great motion using this mode mixture here because the A flat it almost makes the ending sound very grand. Um, so that is the point of using, again, mode mixture because you can create some very interesting sounds while staying within the key of C major. You don't have to use C minor. You could stay in C major and just borrow chords from the minor key. So now let's see what happens when we place these two techniques. We use them, incorpor incorporate them into a chord progression, and let's see how much more rich this chord progression can get. So we're going to do the same chord progression, but I'm going to incorporate some secondary dominant chords and, of course, the mode mixture. And then we're also going to see, uh, well, you'll see the chord progression down below in the black screen there. So let's just go ahead and take a listen to this. Alright, so that is the use of modal interchange chords with secondary dominance. This is a very basic explanation and pretty much all you really need to know about modal interchange chords and secondary dominance. If you still have any confusions, just leave your comments down below and I'll get to it as soon as possible. Also, before you go, there's a link in the description to my website where you can rock some John Moon Studios gear. Starting in April, anyone who sends me their photos rocking the John Moon Studios gear, I'll feature you guys on my YouTube channel. You can also check out my ebook, Five Tips to Be a Successful Musician. It is also listed in the merch website down below in the description. You can check it out. These are five tips that will help you propel your career and move forward. These are tips that have helped me and these are tips that I continue to use today. It's a very short read, so you can go ahead and pick that up as well. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up, subscribe. Don't forget to hit the ring button so you don't miss any of my brand new videos. And don't forget to share with your musician friends. I will catch you guys later.